Pittsburgh at Cincinnati. So this line on the look ahead obviously had Joe Burrow intact and not out for the season. It was Cincinnati minus six at home. It's now down to, or it's has Pittsburgh favored as a one point favorite. I think it was a pick em or Cincinnati maybe favored when the line reopened. But either way, the Steelers now favored very slightly on the current point spread. Total of 34 and a half. We saw the total yesterday. Shout out to... Our guy, Zach Jackson, coming on the podcast on Thursday, taking every How much out did he nail? Under. He said Bills by 17. They won by 30. Got to give him a shout out. Give him a shout out on X Twitter, whatever platform you want to call it. But yeah, give him some hype. Guy needs, everybody needs a, a hype man. Okay. You could be Zach Jackson's hype man for Monday. Yeah, he did no? good work. He did good work. So... The Steelers, even though they lost outright to Cleveland yesterday in the final moments, despite outgaining them in yards per play, still the only team to begin the NFL season at 6-3 and before yesterday's game, after getting outgained in every single one of those nine Oh, oh, yeah, and let me interject again real quick. He also said he didn't know how Minnesota was going to score a point against Ohio State. They scored three. The guy killed it. Did Marvin, what did Marvin Harrison do? I'm not sure. I didn't even look at the box score. I just saw the final score. <laughs> I, I will say Maryland did cover. That was a fun game to watch. That was, I, I was, I was really hoping for all the bullshit. You're now over at swear words. Think you're, you're at two and much more than I'm at on the season. Rightfully so, considering the justified complaints you've had. Only one touchdown. He did not score two any time touchdowns. Zach Jackson did not cash there, but he didn't say bet Michigan. He just said, don't fade Michigan, Maryland, keeping that within a possession. But we digress about college football. You can listen to our college football betting show with Kelly Ford and Brock Gibbons if you're more interested in that or interested at all. I don't care about college football, and it may not make any sense considering how much I love college basketball. But regardless, Pittsburgh's still overrated in the market to me, especially with this line having Pittsburgh favored. Cincinnati coming off the mini buy. After losing on Thursday Night Football, should be getting, I think Cam Taylor Britt is going to play, even though he's questionable, uh, considering the Bengals did have some time to rest up and do have the edge over the Steelers in that area. Cincinnati ranking, I talked about this when it came to pass block win rate for the Packers. The Bengals have the seventh best run block win rate. So I think this is going to be a Joe Mixon game, especially when you factor in that it's Jake Browning starting at quarterback for Cincinnati, even though he looked okay on that final possession against Baltimore scoring a touchdown. That was also a prevent defense for the Ravens. Steelers rank number 20 in EPA per carry allowed this entire season. Kenny Pickett on the flip side, no matter how much you want to grade downgrade the Bengals quarterback situation from Burrow to Browning Pickett has the third worst EPA per drop back combined with CPOE completion percentage over expected among qualified quarterbacks this season. The only two quarterbacks ahead of him, Zach Wilson and Aiden O'Connell. Both teams fighting for their playoff lives, but I will be on the Bengals. It just depends on hopefully getting a better number. I don't think it's going to reach. I'm not saying I'm looking to get the key number three or buying up to the key number three, but even getting point and a half too, I will wait to see if I can get a better number on Cincinnati. Are you going to be on the Bengals here, Mo? Yeah, maybe I'm just too married to my priors on this one, like you with your power rankings. But, man, I was really excited to bet the Bengals. Before Joe Burrow got hurt, I thought minus five and a half with extra rest coming in here against a Steelers team that just stinks, basically, at the end of the day. Like, I know they're getting W's, but they are not good at all. I thought that line was insane, and it should be on the other side of seven. Like, dude, I think the Bengals were going to destroy the Steelers. Especially coming off a loss and a mini And now, I still like the Bengals. <sighs> you sounded like Chris Collinsworth. First of all, like you said, Jake Browning came in and did look good at times. Even before prevent defense, dude, he threw a few dimes. That drop by Trent and Irwin when they were still trying to stay in the game. I mean, Ravens were still playing hard on D at that point. That was a still a one-possession game, I think, at that point. So I know there's a lot of people who would think Browning is maybe one of the worst backups, and maybe he is. I mean, this guy's history is 
not promising. Like I know he was like a big time high school recruit, <clears throat> but after that, undrafted, it took him multiple years to even like see an NFL field basically, which is not a good sign. <laughs> but I mean, it's still the Bengals offense, so like he's going to have a great ecosystem to come into. Especially if Hopefully T. T Higgins, Higgins, Higgins back. comes back, right? Like and, and I think he's probably a favorite to come back. I mean, he just missed two games with not a major injury. So with especially now some extra rest, like I think he's probably going to play. And and like you said, this Bengals offensive line has, has performed all year. They really have. So I know you can sometimes, especially with a bad quarterback who, you know, usually most backups, one of the things that, is separating backups from starters in this league is just awareness, you know, being aware of the pass rush. Most backups take way too many sacks and maybe that'll be the case here, but it is a spot where his offensive line has performed. So he should have some pockets. And then on the other side, you have a Steelers team on the road with a dreadful quarterback and an awful passing game. This Passing offense is bottom of the barrel. And playing on the road against Lou Anarumo, who, yeah, the Bengals have been a bad defense overall this year, but still a coordinator with a clue here. I I mean, this passing offense is not far from the Jets, like you pointed out. And one thing I've been noticing when I watch Pittsburgh in, in recent weeks, man, their offensive line is really opening up some holes in the running game. They did really good work against the Packers. There was massive holes that entire game. And then, dude, they racked up a bunch of rushing yards. I know it was one big run mostly against the Browns, but they racked up a bunch of— I mean, that's the Jalen That's the Jalen Warren effect, yeah, too. Yeah, Warren the is The fact good. that they're actually giving him more touches. Yeah, yeah. So, like, can Pittsburgh just come out here and pound the rock and win a low-scoring game? Yeah, maybe. Like, the Bengals' metrics, which are pretty awful, they definitely say he can. but Or they can, but— I kind of say with extra time to prepare and a defensive coordinator that everyone respects, maybe not. I mean, this Pittsburgh passing offense on the road, like I I just have way more confidence in teams winning dirty games with bad quarterbacks at home than I do on the road. So I'm interested in the Bengals. I think they should maybe be short favorites here. I'm with you. I don't know if T Higgins will necessarily move the line, but just make sure to join our Discord. Discord channel link is over at thelines.com in the top right hand corner and you'll find out when Mo and I wind up playing the Bengals we're going to be on Cincinnati we're going to be on Green Bay just depends on the number it sounds like Mo is getting ready to fire off on Washington and potentially Seattle but either way confirm those bets in real time get the notifications on your mobile device when we wind up placing these bets